Well, good day, YouTubers. And you join me on the Coventry Canal at Marston Junction, which is the junction with the Ashby Canal, which I explored in season nine. You also join me for a significant milestone in Travels by Narrowboat, season 10, and also the start of the 82nd episode. For season 10, I'm gonna be continuing on along the Coventry Canal and then turning left at Hawkesbury Junction onto the Oxford and heading south. But more about that later. Aslan's moored about 200 yards back up the canal there. So it's time to haul anchor and get this show on the road. tale of Aslan and the gent to be seen their travels before. Well, did you know that they're back again and cruising the canals once more? Sold up downsides for a minimalised alternative life afloat. Going boldly where thousands have been before. One man, one life, one boat. Good morning, and yes, as I say, travelling the 200 yards or so down to Marston Junction and the start of season 10. And a very good start there, a viewer. The weather is a little so-so at the moment. Here in Britain now summer disappeared around about the start of July. A lot of grey dull days, rain, very occasional glimpses of sunshine, wind and sometimes actually cold. Thankfully now at the first week in August our summer is showing signs of returning. Once I arrive at Marston Junction I'll be continuing the two and three quarter miles to Hawkesbury Junction, or as it's known historically among the boating fraternity, Sutton Stop. To start with, however, I won't be turning at Hawkesbury Junction and onto the Oxford Canal, as I'll be continuing on the five and a half miles to Coventry Basin, which is in Coventry, strangely enough. Once I've moored there overnight, had a look around, 
I'll then return to Hawkesbury Junction and continue on to the Oxford Canal, a canal which holds many very fond memories, but more about that later. Marston Junction Ahoy! And during my recent break, as well as staying on the Coventry, and repairing engines, and trying to have a motorcycle holiday, I've made a point not to travel beyond here, so we can rediscover this section of the Coventry together. Two and three quarter miles to Hawkesbury Junction. This greyness is forecast to recede beginning tomorrow. I do remember this place but my memory's playing tricks as I thought it was on the Oxford. By the looks of things, very much a canal boat graveyard. Passing Bedworth and now around two miles to Hawkesbury Junction. Aslan's roof has had its annual paint job. Mainly paint peeling this time round. Just a few rust bubbles which are getting less and less as I've been using a Loctite rust treater. Now it's simply a case of just a bit of light scraping, brush around the edges and then a good roller. I'll just let this boat past. Thought I'd grounded for a split second ebb, but no, nope. all's well in canal world.
up ahead is a winding section of canal which inspired me back in season one to write a short piece of poetry which I shall now recite for your listening pleasure. <clears throat> o canal, O canal, how you doth bend and twist and flow like a canal. Ah, oh, thank you. Ah, oh, thank you. Eat your heart out, John Cooper Clark. Now around three quarters of a mile to Hawkesbury Junction. I thought for a moment that was a swing bridge, but I couldn't for the life of me remember there being one. Maybe a little bit of trimming required there. Hawkesbury Junction not far now, just a couple of turns. Hawkesbury Junction, as it's the junction with the Oxford Canal, is of course historically very significant and very busy. Still busy today, though obviously not as much as in its heyday, when it would have seen hundreds of craft every day. On the right is the old steam engine pump house, which used to pump water from a well into the canal. The engine was long since removed and is now exhibited in Dartmouth Museum. An incredibly narrow section through here. Well, I don't remember it being this narrow. I reckon they've moved the sides in. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Hawkesbury Junction itself then. And I will be turning into there and joining the Oxford. But not right now. Continuing on then along the remaining five and a half miles to Coventry Basin. And the end of the Coventry Canal. As with a lot of canals that I travel along, I frequently receive various bits of advice with regards mooring. And uh, the Coventry Canal, this section is no different. I'm told by quite a few people that it's not a good idea to moor up anywhere along it, except in the basin itself, which is perfectly okay. Uh, nine times out of 10, you know, that advice comes to nothing, but I don't want to tempt fate. Um, touch wood and all that. Is there wood? Oh yeah, there's a bit of wood there. So we'll just see how it goes. 
but I intend to get to Coventry Basin and more up there. about to pass under the M6 motorway which thankfully is going at right angles to the canal so it'll disappear just as quickly as it appeared a motorway I used to travel many times and never knew this was here Very shortly we'll be arriving at Longford Bridge, which is also a bend, and which is the original junction for the Oxford Canal. 150 years ago or so, the Oxford Canal was about 15 miles longer than it is now. It used to be extremely windy and bendy, and back then works were carried out to straighten up parts of it and reduce its length part of which was creating a new junction at Hawkesbury. No sign of the old junction here. And not a lot of time to film it because uh, this is a very blind narrow bend. Aye, so the Oxford would have headed off in that direction. that on eBay. Replacement fridge door, new old stock. Ah, I thought the days of the shopping trolley in the canal uh, was long over, but no. Can't be that bad. There's a boat there. And there's one a bit further on as well. Coventry, historically a very industrial town. I've only ever visited Coventry once, and that was years ago when I was an industrial door fitter and uh, did some work, put some doors in, in the old Jaguar factory. Uh, yeah, it was a very, um, almost like cottage industry kind of uh, building that, no longer there. They'd have these little rooms where there'd be some guy with a cloth and polish, you're shining up wood, 
and uh, an upholsterer for the chairs, welders. Uh, it's very um, sort of basic. I don't think the factory's there anymore. It's probably been ripped down and turned into houses or a retail park. But I remember at night you'd want to go out of the B&B &B and find somewhere to get something to eat and have a pint. Uh, and the nearest pub was about three miles away. Yeah, the walk seemed to be a lot quicker coming back than it did going, is all I will say. Just been told by a passing gentleman there that there's more trolleys in the canal. Bridge number seven, Old Church Road Bridge. That's a tongue twister. Bridge number seven, Old Church Road Bridge. Church Road Bridge. <laughs> bridge number seven, Old Church Road Bridge. And three miles to the basin. Lovely smell of bread being baked there. Eh? lads there fishing and uh, they've caught about four little roach. I'm frequently asked if there's fish in the canal and uh, yes there's your proof. There must be fish in the canal otherwise all the fishermen I see and fisherwomen of course will be enjoying quite a boring hobby. In its heyday, this stretch of the Coventry would have been extremely busy. Ferrying goods further north along the Coventry to Fradley Junction, and of course south at Hawkesbury Junction along the Oxford. Navigation bridge, and more like a tunnel. Seeing as the basin is the only place that's recommended to moor up on this part of the commentary, and it's summer, I uh, hope there's room. If not, I'm not going to moor anywhere else, and I'm quite prepared to just turn round and uh, go back to Hawkesbury Junction. But that's a last minute sort of decision. And I haven't even got there yet, so let's wait and see, eh? This is very unusual. A road bridge with lights in it. Quite a cool effect.
Coming up on the left is Stoke Heath Basin. But I'm not sure if that's now a sort of a marina or extra moorings. Well, that answers that. It's some private moorings. Very pleasant. The sun is beginning to break through. And for the remainder mile and a half or so of the Coventry, it becomes very twisty and narrow in places. I'm right in the thick of it here. This has all the hallmarks of a canal less travelled. At times I'm thinking to myself, where am I heading? And just like that, we're on the Oxford. A canal I've been looking forward to doing again for quite some time.